Good morning. I'm calling this special meeting of the Town Council uh, to order Tuesday, August 10th, 2011 at 9 a.m. I called for a special meeting. Martin. I called for a special meeting legally. I notified the clerk last week. Yes, it is. No, it is not. a special meeting of the town council. This is council. a regular meeting. Martin, no. please. If this is, uh, if, if Mr. Foster is referring to the meeting that he posted in the agenda form without a notice and where there was no notice placed on the website, then you are correct that that would be an illegal meeting to hold. I have no access to that website, and you ordered the town clerk not to post that meeting on the website, as she informed me. So that I didn't order anybody to do anything. Ms. Taft did then. So that meeting was posted with the clerk last Thursday, and I put the agendas out myself 24 hours in advance. But you didn't put out notices, so sorry. This is a special meeting of the town council. No, this court. is a regular meeting. Okay. Then you guys want to violate open meeting law one more time. Uh, okay. you, can, you can follow whatever you want. Right away for the seven, let them go. This was a legally called for meeting under the town code, and that's all right. If, the, if you want, then you can have your illegal meetings. Here we go. Excuse me, Martin. Will you please clarify for the audience, please? The, uh, the, the meeting that was called by the council. Sorry, the, the meeting that was called by the council was uh, properly advertised. It was requested by three council members. All of this was done in accordance with the uh, town code. Um, I've contacted the attorney general's office. They have indicated that this, in fact, is a legal meeting and that the meeting that the mayor attempted to call was not, an uh, not a legal meeting. Uh, that's advice that we got in advance from the attorney general's office. So Put that in writing. Okay, keep that down, please. This is we're just having a regular meeting here. We got some business for you. Get done. I also want to inform the council that I received a letter from an attorney claiming to be Mr. Foster's attorney uh, in his official capacity as mayor. There's no legal provision that allows that. But in any event, it, it instructed me not to speak to uh, Mr. Foster about anything uh, where he is adverse to the position of this council. And inasmuch as Mr. Foster has declared that his intent is to destroy this town and the council's intent is to preserve this town, I can't imagine that there's anything at all that I could speak to Mr. Foster about. I think you got it. Exactly. Yeah. You quit turning the table around. You're the one that's trying to take this town down. That's enough. Keep it down, please. Don't get attached to your bar card, Martin. Go ahead and look at me again. Okay. We're going to go continue with our regular meeting. Okay, I'd like to call to order the regular meeting either. of the Common yeah, Council. The Excuse me. Okay. Like Mr. <clears throat> Brenner said, we have talked to the AG's office. AG gave us our information. So we're going to continue. Okay, I'd like to call to order the Town of Quartzsite's regular meeting of the Common Council. Tuesday, August 9th, 2011 at 9 a.m. Really, it's 9.05. Okay, I, is there Aaron, please, give us our invocation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord. We thank you that we could gather to do the business of this town. And Father, I pray that you would just give uh, unity here this morning, Father. Give a peace to our town. Father, we thank you for the freedom that we have to meet. Lord, we just pray that your hand would be upon this whole meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Roll call. Mayor Foster. Vice Mayor Kevel. Here. Councilmember Anderson. Here. Councilmember Kelly. Here. Councilmember Lucasen. Here. Councilmember Winslow. Here. Next is approval and amendments of the agenda. Uh, Do I have announcements? There, that's not on there. I make a motion to amend and remove 080911-SP1. Second. We have a <coughs> we have a motion. Is that what, and yeah, it's a motion to amend the uh, the agenda to remove item zero eight zero nine one one dash S. And a, okay, and a second. Second. Okay. <laughs> uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Okay, then there would need to be a motion to adopt the uh, agenda as amended. Okay. Yeah. So I make I a motion we adopt the agenda as written. No, as amended. As amended. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Next is reports and announcements. Uh, Alex. Uh, this is a manager's report. Uh, the first section involves the roads. Riggles Road Project is scheduled to be paved by August 29-30 in this year. The AB mix will be hauled in from August 10th through the 18th. Finish grade will be August 22 to 25. Um, then the paving and striping will be September 6, 2011. This project was funded in part by an irrevocable letter of credit from former owners of the gas station and with matching labor from the town. Dome Rock Road project was planned to be a joint project between La Paz County and the town of Quartzsite, and it has been stalled. Initially, La Paz County stated they would supply materials if we would supply some of the labor. Then they stated that we would have to pay approximately $17,000 for the oil as part of the repaving cost. Then an IGA, which is an intergovernmental agreement, was going to be drafted by La Paz County, and we have not seen that. This is a project that has been stalled for the better part of two years. In the meantime, the road continues to deteriorate. The town is in receipt of complaints on the condition of the road, and perhaps we should just plan to have paved the road ourselves. That would be a, a council decision at a future date. There are several roads in town that dead end to other dead end roads, making it very difficult for emergency vehicles to have access and or to be able to turn around. After discussing this plant problem with our town engineer, his suggestion was to go forward with a transportation master plan. The cost of that plan can be funded through an ADOT Planning Assistance for Rural Areas grant, or PARA. This is a project we would like to pursue to assure better access for emergency services in some of these smaller neighborhoods where the roads just stop. And it would also, of course, improve our roads. We are beginning the planning stages of a Safe Routes to School grant project. Pre-planning is required by ADOT, who funds these projects. Areas where school children can walk to school are being identified. The grant project can potentially pay for sidewalks, crosswalks, and bicycle paths. The granite signage for the Gateway Signage and Landscaping Grant will be here from California next week. What remains to be completed are the columns to support the granite, the camels, the pyramids, which will also be delivered next week from Phoenix, and the landscaping and lighting around each sign. The High Jolly Wayfinding and B10 Landscaping Grant has also been started. This grant places signs on the interstate showing traffic where the High Jolly Mon Monument is located. Landscaping along West Main Street, which is a lot of it will be hardscape and some trees and benches. These grants are funded by ADOT Enhancement Funds. Next item is the Wastewater Treatment Expansion Project. 
The town of Quartzsite is receiving a $3.7 million grant to expand the treatment plan and complete related projects. The letter of conditions is being completed by USDA as we speak. The related projects that we were able to include with this project include extending a water line up to the treatment plant, completing a jurisdictional review of Tyson Wash by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Um, right now our sewer main runs right through Tyson Wash and uh, that was permitted by the U.S. Army Corps. As we expand and grow, we're going to need to expand the size of that main. Right now it's 15 inches and we needed a jurisdictional review by the U.S. Army Corps in order to look at expanding our easement through the wash. Now by expanding that easement through the wash, when we do decide we need a bigger sewer main, we can lay the pipe right alongside it and not interrupt service. The way it is right now, it's just very squeezed in. To put a three foot main pipe down there alongside the main that's already there would really use more than we have for working area for the 16 um, foot easement that's there now. So this grant is paid for that jurisdictional review, which is the st first step of expanding the easement. Um, additional projects include a sewer master plan for expansion of the sewer service in town. That has been completed. Planning doesn't put any pipe in the ground or any water spigots out there, but, and it may seem like wasted effort, but grant funds are simply not available without the planning. Grantors want to be sure we have found the most cost-effective way to achieve the goals of the project and stay compliant with state laws and requirements. It should be noted that a grant of this size would not have occurred without the tireless efforts of the town council who made the difficult decisions to audit our water and sewer systems and to give staff directive to get everyone hooked who could be hooked to water and sewer. This was a considerable effort and the reward has been a grant that was not even offered before these changes occurred. Thank you. Okay. Any other reports? Uh, yes, first of all, make sure your cell phones are turned off. Thank you. Uh, a quick reminder, uh, Friday, August 12th at 5 p.m. Senior Center, there will be, will be a community picnic that will be sponsored by the area churches. Uh, they, they say just bring yourselves and enjoy. And on Saturday, August 13th from 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., uh, Sympatico and the Courtside Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition are sponsoring a community fun day at the football field. There will be lots of fun for the whole family with water slides and water activities for kids of all ages. Root beer floats available for a dollar each. Uh, bring your chairs and blankets for an afternoon on the cool grass. Thank you. Joe? Yeah, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused on the uh, conundrum out there at uh, Riggles Road. Could you explain that again, just the part about the... I heard that 17,000. You mean Joe Rock? Yeah. Oh. Is that okay? Yes. Um, what happened was we had talked to the um, district supervisor and she was really anxious to help us get Dome Rock paved. And uh, originally um, they were going to supply all the materials and we were going to supply the labor. But apparently um, the materials would not include the oil, which was a $17,000 investment. Well, uh, more conversation occurred, and then we said, uh, then the, the next step became getting the IGA, which is the Intergovernmental Agreement, because they can't help us with that, that, without that document in place. They said they would handle it. I sent them all the prior IGAs so they ha would have something to go by for a document. My understanding is that Dan Barbara wrote it and now it's stalled somewhere. We don't know where it is. Okay. So, but the problem is we have people coming back to Rainbow and that area is, it's, it's getting worse by the minute. I'm sure um, many people know that and go out to visit friends and whatnot. Did we have a discussion with the, uh, the 
county supervisors about this? We did, a long time ago, and it's just stalled, and in the meantime, I'm getting emails and we've getting, we're getting letters with regard to the state of, of Dome Rock. And originally, I thought it was all going to be taken care of a couple of years ago, but it, that has just simply not happened. And some of it is paperwork, some of it is, you know, things come up. But now it's gotten to the point where the road is pretty much a yeah. nail biter. So, okay. does that yeah. answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Are we all done with reports? Okay. Uh, we'll go to the consent agenda. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the consent, as, consent agenda as written. Second. Any discussion? Motion is to for the consent agenda to be <clears throat> accepted as written. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? New business. Alex Taft. This is discussion and possible action to fill the vacant council position pursuant to Town Code Section 2-4-1, which states, quote, the council shall fill a vacancy that may occur by either of the following. Uh, appointment for the unexpired term, appointment into the next regularly scheduled council election if the vacancy occurs more than 30 days before the nomination petition's deadline. Yes, Bob. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. I make a motion that we appoint Mike Jewett to fill the vacant council seat for the unexpired term. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. All those in favor, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Michael Jewett? Thank you for placing the question. I did want to say something. We had a work session on this, and we talked to all of the candidates, which were wonderful. And, and we could only pick one, but I want you to please consider continuing to be on this council, every one of you. Um, I, I was to be appointed twice, or not, I came to be appointed twice, and both times I was not appointed. So, you know, it, it, like I said, the, there only was one, and like I said, all of you, please continue to, to participate in our, in our um, council meetings and be there for us. We appreciate all of you. Okay, we need Terry. Okay. Do we have to have a motion on this or anything? No, he's been appointed, so at this point he can be sworn. Okay, okay. To raise your right hand, please, and repeat after me. State of Arizona. State of Arizona. County of La Paz. County of La Paz. I, Michael Harold Andrew Jewett. I, Michael Harold Andrew Jewett. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of the State of Arizona. And the Constitution and laws of the State of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And defend them against all enemies. And defend them against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of council member. Of the office of council member. For the town of Portside, Arizona. For the town of Portside, Arizona. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. According to the powers vested.
vested in me as town magistrate of Quartzsite, Arizona, I do hereby declare you Michael Harold Andrew Jewett, duly sworn council member for the town of Quartzsite, Arizona. Thank you. Thank you. I make a motion we approve resolution 11 11, authorizing the execution of an agreement regarding transfer and use of property, and write a first refusal of an egress and ingress agreement, waterline easement agreement, and number four memorandum. Agreement and use so we land use restriction and write a first refusal authorizing the town manager to execute all documents to perform all such tasks as required to satisfy the terms of the agreement. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Is there any discussion? This, I, I do have a, a question. Now, this land did not cost the town anything. This has been a long time coming. It is a handshake agreement that started a long time ago with Chance Hamilton, the owner of the property. The cost to the town is going to be uh, approximately $4,750 for the attorney fees for the owner of the property. Um, and uh, that's it. We'll go to the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Number four. Jerry. Yep. This is to discuss regarding training of a town employee to perform the backflow testing duties. That's for discussion only. 
Okay, so we don't need a motion on that for discussion. Who do we have to win? Right now, everybody pays to have their back plane tested, and I feel that it should be part of our water bill, and that people should not have to pay for it. We would do it on our annual basis. We go out and read the meters anyway, and if these people are trained, they should be able to do the testing throughout the year and not have to charge the people for the testing. Okay, but what if it has to be repaired? If it has to be repaired, we're the ones that require them to have it. I think we should repair it. But that can run into quite a bit of money. I don't. I, I was trying to get the prices on it before I got here, but we're not. I don't think we're looking at that much to do it, especially if we maintain them. There's no way I have a lot of money in the water now. Yes, Alex. We looked into this, and the number of meters we have out there right now is 434. Um, the uh, what, how that would factor out would be about even with repairs, about a thousand hours a year, which factors out to a part-time employee. Um, 2080 is a full-time, so a thousand hours or a thousand forty hours would be a twenty hour a week employee and that's what it would cost in terms of to do the for the labor for the uh, backflow testing um, I will tell you that we right now we have people that have their own businesses that do this um, and they uh, and then we have somebody that sends out the letters and when the backflows are due and they monitor it and if the backflows aren't tested then we have to address that issue etc so there is a measure of labor involved with backflows whether we repair them or somebody else um, does them or, or checks them and tests them um, because of simply the paperwork and the tracking we're required to do that because of ADEQ uh, we can't have our water system contaminated but um, on this uh, you know, there is there is a certain amount of paperwork whether we do the testing. If we do the testing, it probably simplify our paperwork. If we have somebody else and we send a letter and then a reminder letter and then a door knocker sometimes that often happens, that's its own set of paperwork and effort too. So... Well, that's where I feel that we're spending a lot of money just following up on everything. We do. I don't know if it's if it's the same amount or not, um, but we do. Do we spend? Uh, is there a whole rash of uh, backflow failures that I don't know about? Nope. I know it's expensive when it happens, but uh, it's, it's not that expensive. The thing is, we're spending a lot of money just having people call everybody up, saying you got to have your backflow tested. Yeah. We continue to do this, and pretty soon. No, they didn't do it, so we're sending them out nasty letters. By the time we mess with all that, we might as well just take care of ourselves. Yeah. Make sure the, that they're working properly, and then there's no question. But this is not... Um, the reason why we have a backflow device is because... To protect us, the town. Right, because they continue to use their wells. That's right. If they did not have a... Uh, continue to use their well, then the... They would not require a backflow. No, they still would require it. No. Yep. It does not matter if you have a well or not. You have okay. Okay. That's commercial. That's, commercial. That, that's only, yes. Commercial only. So you could contaminate the water of a well? No. You're kidding we, me. No. Uh, what we have is a rule that says that if you are, if you have a well and you want to exclusively use the town water, then you have to abate your wells, weld it down. Without the backflow. Right. Okay, I misunderstood that. But I still think by the time we mess around with it, we're ahead by taking care of it. The well, only objection that I have to this is you have private entities that contract to do these type of tests. I have one in the subdivision that's done on a yearly or half year basis. It's only like $50 for someone to come out and test this. It protects the town of that, and I just don't feel that we should be interfering and depriving other people of outside entities and private businesses of the money.
money that they can make doing this because I don't know of anywhere else in the country that does this. In most places, if you have a back load of lights, it's up to you to pay for it and put it in, and it's up to you to maintain it. And I just don't see okay, that's not, you know, the extra expense of training somebody and having a full-time employee running around. If I'm a private homeowner, I don't have to pay it. I will but I'm gladly, helping pay for the guy with the business. I will gladly get you a list of the towns that require a backflow on it, and I will gladly give that to you. I just don't feel well, that we should be doing this. There's pri private entities that take care of this. And I don't think it's right that the town should do it. It would be the same thing when we talked here about putting a deal in where everybody had to go to a certain garbage company. I just don't see the town stepping into this. I think we need to leave it alone just the way it is. I don't feel like paying a, a water bill to subsidize somebody else that's got a back over place. Is there any other discussion? I think that we need to look into this a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So, is that is that okay with everybody else? Uh, can I clarify? Yes, Alex. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, can it, so what you would like is the current cost versus to the town versus the cost of what it would be if we had somebody doing it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Five. Okay, number five is the approve, I make it approve or reject the reduction of the church sewer rates for the months of June, July, and August on a per seat basis. Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we approve reduction of church sewer rates for the months. June, July, and August on a per seat basis. Second. Okay, I have a motion and seconded. Any discussion? I do have a comment. I think if we can help our, our year-round uh, businesses, churches, uh, to help them make it through the hot summer, then uh, uh, I think we we need to do you know look into every and and every business and see if we can't apply this. So, um, may, may I ask a question? Yes. Um, is the purpose of this to recognize the fact that there's a smaller impact in the summer months on the town sewer system? Yes. And and that would be true of businesses as well. Yes, we have we already have it in place for restaurants and um, and laundromats and so um, and that's the same way with churches. Why not RV There's, park? Why not resident? We're discussing about the churches right now. So. Why not equal treatment? Yeah, I, I would uh, I would suggest that I use my personal restroom just as often uh, in the summer months uh, when I'm here as I do when I'm. It doesn't change for me. I don't stop pooping in the summer. Right, but in a church. But a, but a church and a business would have fewer people using the restroom, would have a smaller impact on the town's sewer system. So uh, I, I would suggest that they're not similarly situated. Okay. Steel equally. Uh, I'm going to object to this. This the same thing again. I, we're doing this piecemeal again. You're giving this one a break, and that one a break, and then this one a break. If we're going to give a break, let's give it to everybody on an equal plate. Before us, yeah, we're, we want them to come before us and and let us know that the, the need is there. Well, I just think if we keep doing this piecemeal, we're defeating the whole purpose of what we're trying to do, and that's to get everybody to hook up the sewer and water and get on the system. Yes, yeah, so we can really steal. You know, I understand, just like some of them are saying, the RV parks. What about them? I've got a subdivision over there the same way. Same thing at Desert Gardens. You don't have half the people there, but we're still paying. They're paying sewer rates in some of these parts and stuff, and there ain't anybody using them. It's and I don't think, feel that we're treating this fair, making exceptions for the church or making exceptions for somewhere else. Let's make a uniform policy that fits everything, or let's not have anything. Any other discussion? How would we bring that about? 
are you going to do about it? I don't see why we need to give each one of these a special exemption for anything. Let's make a policy and stick to the policy and enforce it, period. Hmm. That's what hasn't been done in the past. This is a work in progress. When we did the rates, it was something we had to do. And now we're working, and we promised that we would work through it to find yep. different ways that, that to make it as easy as possible on the people of Quartzsite, no matter what they have or where they're at in Quartzsite. Year-round in Quartzsite, it, they do not, a lot of the businesses do not get the revenue in the, in the summertime, and they're not using all their building in the summertime. By the gallon and, like you promised! By the gallon! Excuse me. By the gallon. We are working through this. We're trying to work on a, a, a rate for the RV parks and the mobile home parks. And we're trying to figure out how we're going to do this. We've been working on it ever since we started. We're trying to do a, a volume. And we've been told how we have to do that. But a lot of them have not signed up yet to do it. And so we're still working bucks. for we're still working for our, the people of the town. Oh. And this is we're having to work through this. And so this is just one more little piece that we're doing. So, I mean, we, we have to do it in steps because we're new at this. Rates hadn't been done in 10 years. So, we're trying to work through all of the problems that we're finding. So this is just one little step. And, and we're having to take baby steps. So well, the, point is to the point that I was making is because this involves churches uh, to avoid any problem with uh, establishment, uh, there has to be some reason for it other than the fact that they're churches. Oh, yeah. Right. So it, it has to be based on a reduction in use, and there, you need to be satisfied that there is, in fact, a reduction in use. Um, and and that's, that's a political decision whether there's a reduction in use or not. That's not a legal decision. But legally, there has to be some rational basis for doing so outside of the fact that, that there are churches involved. Okay. That was my only point. Yeah. Alex? Um, we have received letters from the churches, and their their statement is that um, their regular halls of worship have been closed, and they use their smaller uh, buildings for their services, and one of the reasons for that is that they don't want to pay the air conditioning for those big halls when there's only 15 or 20 people in there in their, uh, during their service. So those halls are closed for a couple of reasons and mostly the cost of the, the electric for the air conditioning. So that's, uh, uh, they're not using their big halls at the moment, they're using their smaller um, gathering places for that. So it is a reduction in the, in the use in terms of the building, the buildings are closed. That's my understanding from what I've heard. My objection to some of this is whether they're using it or not. The sewer lines still have to be there. They still have to be taken care of. They have to be maintained. The sewer plant has to be maintained on a year-round basis at the same level. Just because they have diminished use doesn't mean they should get a cheaper rate. We still have to have the sewer line there. If we take the sewer line out and only put it in when people need it, most of the people in town would do this. And I just don't see any logic in giving anybody special breaks, but set a policy that applies to everybody uniformly and stick to it. You're not going to please everybody doing this piecemeal, a little bit here and a little bit there. Joe? Still yeah, equally. I kind of... Uh... I kind of agree with Bob, but at the same time, and, and that's the end that we want to get, but we have all these different categories that have uh, uh, various, uh, uh, what's the word, they, they have a lot of different uh, things to consider. Uh, churches, one, restaurants, we've gone through that. We're going to be working on 
uh, half on RV parts, uh, mobile home parts and stuff, and each one of these are, have to be considered in, uh, in light of their particular uh, function and the way they run their business. So we can't make a across the board cut for everybody. It, it, it just it wouldn't work out. It's not going to be fair. Uh, and it also has to be fair. Why not? What's wrong with being fair? Excuse me, please. So, uh, that, you know, I understand what's going on, but we need to, uh, you know, we're, we're doing this. It's slow, it's piecemeal, but we have to consider everything. And uh, we're not the we're not in a, just a big rush to get this done. That's why it's taken so long. You know, Bob, another thing is, not everybody makes money every month during the summer. And these churches aren't out here making money. These restaurants are out here making money. So we're trying to keep these businesses here, and we're trying to keep these things going. So I think we need to give a little. I don't give, I don't care what, you know, the bottom line is we have to have these people here to service people out here. Yeah. And you so, still have to maintain the system year round, whether anybody's using it or not. Then why don't you don't donate a big check to the churches and help them? If I had the money, I'd just pay the damn thing and be done with it. Okay. I don't see piecemeal in this. We're trying to get away from piecemeal and to start with, and all we're doing is adding it right back in again. Okay. Let's put yeah. a policy out there that says this is what you're going to pay year round and do it. We're working on it, Bob. Not by giving special dispensation to certain groups. You're just going to have more groups coming over here with the same thing. No, you're not. Yes, you are. Michael. I would think that once we go to a per gallon of volume system, Correct. which I understand is what we're working towards, yeah. I'm assuming that the sewer rate or sewer charge each month will be tied to the water use. Therefore, during the summer months, their rates are going to go down. Sure. So all we're doing is advancing the start date of when they will pay reduced rates by giving them a break. Now on seat, on a first seat basis, rather than waiting until everything is run on a metered basis, and they will pay a reduced charge then anyway. I don't Correct. see, you know, uh, what difference it really makes. Yes, it's piecemeal, but unfortunately that looks like the only way we can handle it at this time. Okay, any more discussion? We'll go to the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Nay. The motion carried. Okay, I now declare this meeting adjourned. I didn't hear the gavel. Is it adjourned or is it there's no gavel? I hear a gavel. I heard the gavel. So they didn't do a gavel. You did you hear a gavel? She didn't do a gavel. Did you do a, did you do a gavel? Are you gonna do a gavel? You gonna do a gavel? You did. So I got you on record of saying you did. We can do all the one right up there. Thank you. Okay. There we go. The gavel. Thank you. You'll get your